Hi, I'm Nenny and Doff. Um, I'm a director. I mainly make music videos, which I really love. Because um, it's Music Tech Fest, I thought I'd talk about a sort of, not quite a theory yet, more a thought that I have about my work, which is using very post-heavy ideas and still being able to be really free and spontaneous with how you shoot them. I think loads of stuff that you see in technology, I think this applies outside filmmaking too, where there's a lot of post-production, it totally stifles the sort of the creative part. So um, I, my background's in motion graphics and I used to be quite intimidated by these very glossy, very slick, beautiful lens flare videos, but they often had the performances in them because people have to hit so many points and marks are kind of always a bit like an android is like moving because it's so strict. So I've been sort of trying to make videos that have all my freedom in post-production and after effects especially, which is what I work in, but still let everyone on the performance side be really creative and loose and free. So I just thought I'd go through a few videos today and show them and talk about them. This is an early video which is sort of a bit lo-fi. It's like one of the first videos I made, but I guess it was the beginning of me sort of trying to work a bit more like this, so I thought I'd show it. And as you can see, obviously, it's two elements that both didn't have any strict control. Well, normally with like lots of post-production, it's loads of marks and very strict. We just shot Crows in the Park. I should go without saying this had absolutely no money. This was like self-finance. We just shot Crows in the Park and then also shot Performers in front of a green screen, both quite separate, not very strict. And it was just finding the joy of the two points where they naturally would match. So I knew that if the performer was sort of at three quarters, I could find birds at three quarters. And that would mean that you still get um, all the movements correct, where I think if it was very locked down and strict, the arms would be very strict and be very this. But now all the actors and all the musicians could really perform and sing in the way they did. So that kind of started me going on, um, on that way. Let me find a next one, which sort of continued from this is, this video, here we go. Um, this is for Graham Coxon, who um, you might know from Blur. Um, and this was an idea for, they were kind of interested in crowdsourced videos, which I thought there'd been a lot of. Uh, so I was kind of trying to find a unique approach in that. And what I did is sort of continuing again from doing a very super post heavy idea but letting everyone be free in it. So I just went out on the streets in London with a camera crew and filmed the dancer first. And he didn't have any sort of moves or marks to hit. That's his legs there actually. Um, instead it was really like he was allowed to freestyle and he could do what he wanted and he could bring his performance which is why it's got a nice flow to it and his legs are really doing what they want. And then I broke down his dance into about five key moves like a sidewalk, a leg kick, an arm wave and I put them online and asked fans to do just those five moves and I knew that just by the fact that humans all are different, no one's gonna, one person will do a tiny leg kick, one person will do a huge leg kick, it's just the nature of it. And because I got about 100 videos from around the world in, it meant I could rebuild this guy's full dance as creatively as it was just by asking people to do five things, because it's using the sort of, I'd say using the chaos more and allowing that to do something very technical, then instead trying to get someone to exactly two seconds kick your leg like this, and then walk here. Instead I just sort of ask people to loosely dance, and a bit like with the crow video, it's then finding the moments. And what was brilliant is people did things I didn't even ask, which fit in. Like here, a guy jumped off a wall in his video, which meant I could perfectly just put that in. But that wasn't asked for, it wasn't very strictly laid out. That was sort of more just letting everyone, everyone perform in a really fun way. And I think that's kind of, if I was trying to achieve anything, it's sort of trying to get humanity and like fun and spontaneity into super technical productions, which I think is normally where the sort of you feel they're lacking sometimes. Um, and then it's sort of, because you've got all the elements, you can go as weird as you want, really. So I'll play this for a little bit more, and then uh, we'll go on to the next one. And uh, we got, I think there was uh, 35 different countries in the end represented, and 100 videos, so you've got people in the snow, and you've got people in Australia, all sort of simultaneously forming together. Uh, 
I'll just move on then to another one. Um, so the next video I then want to show, which I think I'll show a bit more of, because they asked, uh, this is one of the videos I was asked to come here for. This is another sort of a technical post idea, which is, it's for Doom, MF Doom, and um, it's again sort of a bit like trying to find a new idea with crowdsourced ideas. Split screen has been done a million times in music videos, so I had this idea of, it's, it's normally always mirrored down the middle, but in this case it's not mirrored, it's two completely different shots, but Doom's mask connects the two impossibly between two different bits of footage. So I start quite subtle, so you hopefully don't realise, and then as you'll see the camera starts moving more chaotically, but his mask holds it together. Um, and I think sort of I'm continuing what I was saying about trying to just keep everything free for performance around the technology. This was maybe one of the videos where he did have to hit marks quite strictly, like you normally have to do in quite technical post-production. So it was making use of that. So if you notice the floor is, I did the marks you have to hit and then we just covered a million other marks on it. So it's like taking advantage of the technical side instead of trying to hide it doing it times a million and that way you can kind of show everything and you don't have to hide them and he doesn't have to glance down. Um, I'll just I'll let this play for a bit because this is the one. We can turn up a wee bit if you want. Get the fatter check split. How much for a hundred thousand tons of correct shit? Sell a Chinese half price seafood. Prices like a real nice street dude. Who can knock the most dead birds out the sky and then spread a lie and say you know why? Back. Get the machine, blame it on the fireworks, clean up, y'all know where to send the wire jerks. Black teeth still snack on sweets, and get stacks with the quick on quick. They used to sell CDs, now they got fake weed, seeds burning trees is potpourri. Buyer beware, had to tell us one liar, sire be fair. At least I tie a hair from the chair while I'm here. I hate play loving her, JJ for governor. So in that shot, he was walking forward on one side and walking backwards on the other. Uh, but yeah, so again, it's a kind of on paper and everyone got, in pre-production, there were a lot of like people scratching their heads and trying to work it out because it sounded super complicated because I was saying I wanted to join these two worlds together through his mask and people were thinking about it. People were almost over, getting over technical in the planning on it, and I, was, I kept saying, like, we just need a steady cam, we just need to follow him. And then in post production, I, I, it was kind of a complicated way. I stabilized his mask in both shots, connected them back together, and then sort of destabilized the shot so it moved again, but his mask never left. But I think it's just sort of continuing what I've been trying to say of. He just had to perform his doom. You didn't, someone who's been, you know, his, his career is like 20 years long, and he's a pro, and I didn't want to be bossing him around, so um, it's, it's just finding ways that you can just let the performer 100% be themselves and not be constrained by your idea, but you can still do a really, then really technical kind of post idea on top of it. Um, which I think the final video I wanted to show here was, oh, there's also this one which I won't show all of, but it just sort of continues from it as well a little bit. I like the beginning of it. <laughs> Um, it's another simple idea that you can go further. Walking in my Sunday suit, eyes on fire. Came across you walking on the other side. So this is kind of a bit similar. I like what I like about this video is probably the one I'm least, for various reasons, I'm not quite as happy with. But I like the opening that you think you're getting a really standard performance video, and then it sort of gets 
hijacked by this strange thing. But this is another sort of, I think, quite fun example of doing... It was a tiny budget, despite being a good musician. And um, find something simple that on the day, no one was too locked down, but this kind of strange creature that appears, we just made by throwing clothes from high up down. And then in post, it was just finding the two frames of footage where the coat and the trousers and the hat were all aligned so it could become a person. So it's a super simple idea that then is a bit of a pain in the ass awesome post, but again, on the day, Graham Coxon can just play his guitar and it, I'm just flinging clothes around and sort of no one's constrained and it's kind of going on like that. But we don't need to watch a lot. Um, so the last video which I was going to play, um, Oh, VLC quit. Cool. Um, I think I'll, I'll play this in full because it's all cut ditchy and it was one I was asked to play here. But just to talk about it first and I guess to sort of recap, conclude, it's again, it's just sort of maybe feels like me finally kind of getting to all these ideas I've been having about how you can have post ideas and not ask anyone to be sort of really rigid or like trying to do things down to the millisecond. Um, and so this is for Darwin D's, and it's an idea that is probably more than any others, literally entirely post-production. It's about looping footage, it's about video. Um, it's, 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 um, it's sort of the least free idea, I guess, that I've had. And yet, the way we set it up is I had six cameras simultaneously filming so that I could get this period in time, which you'll see. And then, by keeping them locked off, it meant that Darwin Dees, as a performer again, could just do whatever he wanted. He could be really free, he could play, he could sing, he could scream, he could jump around. And, um, and it worked great, and I think you can see it again, and I think that's probably what I'm most pleased with. So, I think my kind of conclusion of my vague theory, which isn't quite a theory yet, is, is just to do with making the technology in the post-production bend and adapt and get pushed and maybe struggle to account for the performance rather than the performance having to bend and adapt and struggle to adapt for the post-production. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'll play this video. You can have the volume. Good for it. Uh, and that's it. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoy it.